Podcast Network's family of shows. Available everywhere podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast brought to us always by the GSMC Sports Network. We are now in the home stretch of today's show, and this segment, these next two segments, rather, are about two quarterbacks in drastically different situations in their college careers. The first one we're going to talk about is one who has cemented himself as a breakout star and potentially one of the most exciting young prospects to follow in all of college football. And the other, to end out our show, is a guy who is on his third school in the past three years, really looking to find some consistency and development in his college career. But let's start off with the more exciting prospect here, this guy, I really love the hype surrounding him. I really think that the ACC really needs a guy like him, especially in a time where Florida State and Clemson could be leaving if you know other conferences do want them. And this player certainly feels like he's the next up in the ACC. And that, of course, is Mr. Kyron Jones of Virginia Tech. Oops. Foreshadowing. Nope. Kyron Drones certainly made a name for himself last year in a very impressive way in a conference where, you know, it's not necessarily the best of the Power Five, but it certainly has a duopoly at the top that no teams have really cracked. And if you want to beat Florida Slate, Florida State and Clemson, you really have to bring an aura of Surprise, you really have to bring an aura of superhuman abilities, and that's what I feel like Kyron Drones brings to the table. He's one of the more exciting, fascinating, dual threat quarterbacks that uh, we've seen in college football in the past year. And this year certainly feels like now is his time to announce himself because now it certainly feels like the ACC might be in a bit of turmoil. And who knows how it's going to look. Let's talk about Kyron Jones' season last year. 17 to 3 touchdown interception ratio, 2,903 all purpose yards, and 818 of them were rushing yards for 5 TDs. So, as you can see, the dual threat ability there. His best game was against Tulane, where he had 33.7 points. And the best part about this game was not his passing stats, it was only 13 of 21 for 91 yards for 2 TDs. It was his rushing ability. 20 carries, 176 yards, and one touchdown there. And so, if you want someone who's a dual threat quarterback in fantasy college football, Kyron Jones might be your guy because now there are no really big dual threat QBs who I can see that are proven. Maybe Nico at uh, Tennessee might prove to be one. Uh, Carson Beck really isn't in one. Quinn Ewers might be, but who knows? Kyron Drones, at the end of the day, is the most exciting, and he A, plays in a very manageable conference, and B, most importantly, a conference where there's more parity than ever. And he returns, most importantly, his top three receivers in Daquan Felton, Jalen Lane, and Stephen Gossnell. And when I consider the outlook of the ACC this year, it's safe to say that a lot of people still believe that Florida State and Clemson are the cream of the crop. But, as we'll talk about in the next segment to close out the show, and with Clemson, you really have two teams that don't feel as cemented in the roots of the ACC anymore as they have in the past. And the ACC certainly doesn't feel like a football powerhouse anymore now that both Florida State and Clemson aren't, you know, on the periphery. We saw last year with Florida State. They still got snubbed despite being an undefeated season. Yes, it was kind of fate of circumstance. They didn't have Jordan Travis there. But, as you can see, perhaps the ACC is losing a bit of its luster. And so, if we look at other teams kind of on the periphery, on the outside looking in over the past, who haven't really step up, you might have actually thought of, say, Miami or North Carolina or teams of that nature, not necessarily Virginia Tech, because Virginia Tech hasn't necessarily been this exciting to talk about the prospect of them in quite some time. 
And what Kyron Jones brought last year was electricity. He brought excitement. He brought this kind of, I'm not going to say invincibility, because I do feel like Virginia Tech has a long way to go to actually truly cement itself. But he certainly feels like the kind of player who's announcing himself on the college football scene and on people's radars in terms of fantasy and college football combined. Now here's the thing about picking a guy like Kyron Drones, who perhaps was a complete unknown to most of you before this show. When I think about these guys who, like Kyron Drones, have been around the block a little bit, I feel like these are the guys who have learned more, but haven't really shown that they can develop. Yes, they have had experience, you know, in different places, understanding different cultures, different systems, but the fact that they've just been jumping around hasn't really helped them find a stabilized form of play. When I think about Kyron Jones, I do believe that he was a Baylor quarterback before, and in the short time I saw, I did not believe that this guy would be a star. Because what I saw out of him was a kind of timidity, a kind of glossed overness to him. A player who is just filling a role on a team that might not necessarily be competing. But when you move to a team like VTech, where a lot of pressure isn't on you necessarily, and they're more concerned about growing their program, that's when you really can become a quarterback. And that's what Kyron Jones did. That's what Kyron Jones really believed in. He believed in the fact that pressure might have been holding him back and not allowing him to really tap into the traits that make him a special player. And I'm not saying we were essentially robbed of fantastic play from Kyron Jones over the years because no one truly expected him. But that's the beauty of college football. You can't always expect to know, oh, this quarterback's going to be fantastic this year. Oh, this quarterback's going to throw for over 3,000 yards this year. You can't always know what's going to happen at any given time in the landscape of college football. And so when I'm dissecting a team like VTech and putting them up against other teams in the spotlight that they're kind of in. These are, this is a team that can really focus on not just developing a guy like Kyron Drones, but focus on aspects outside of their control as well, like staying focused when there's so much turmoil going on in the ACC. If Virginia Tech really focuses on themselves rather than what's going on around them, then they are going to be perhaps the contender for the ACC title. I'm not saying with immediacy that they will be the ACC winner, but well, with all this talk about Florida State and Clemson, Florida State and Clemson, Virginia Tech has to feel as if all the attention on them really doesn't affect their style and what they want to do. That's always a positive thing if you're a program that's like Virginia Tech trying to get back to the highest of heights. And when I look at a quarterback like Kyron Drones, I look at a guy who, like I said, has been around the block in college football, has kind of had to find a path that suits him. I'm really intrigued to see if the success is something that can be a trend for him. Because if it is, then he's a very, very dangerous player and a sneaky proposition in terms of fantasy. Because 
It's one thing to have that kind of breakout season when no one's expecting it of you. It's quite another to do it, A, when you see feel like you're a better team, and B, most importantly, in a conference where it certainly feels like it could be yours for the taking. And so, Drones is going to be a guy who a lot of people might gloss over still. But if you do choose to pick him up, I feel like the traits he brings to a fantasy college football team are the best traits you could ask for out of a quarterback. And if he really focuses on them, if he's really consistent in how he chooses to play, then he's a dream player for almost anyone concerned with the college football landscape, and especially a college fantasy football manager. But I'll just about do it for this segment. Coming up to close out the show, we do talk about DJ Wiangule moving to Florida State. Can he prove to be someone you can trust in fantasy college football and perhaps in the future as he makes his NFL career? We'll have to find out after the break.